Hey guys, Nish Quick here, and welcome back to another episode of Nish Quick Talks. And like I said in the last video, I'm just playing around with different locations and different settings and different places where I can film. So yeah, this is just one of many places that I'm like recording for one of these. So I, I, I just like the mobility of being around the house and just recording wherever I want now with this. It can open up possibilities for new videos and even for longer form videos as well. So let me know what you think in the comments below. So this video specifically, I want to just ramble and give my thoughts on video game remakes for a variety of reasons. So I recently had a conversation with my two friends, uh, Mongunzu from the channel Flipping the Switch and my buddy Upper Nimbus from the channel Upper Nimbus. So Zu has this thing on his channel where he brings on other content creators and we just talk about whatever we want to talk about in the world of video games or pop culture, or anime or whatever we want to talk about. And one of the topics that I proposed was video game remakes because that's been on my mind a lot. Like, you guys know recently I put out a video about uh, the Xenogears remake that I want, which I don't think is ever gonna happen, and I really want it to happen. Like, I, I keep saying it's the video game that needs the remake the most, and I wanna talk about that uh, concept specifically today. Video games that need remakes the most, and like, what is this modern age of um, remakes done for that and against that? Like, how do companies prioritize remakes and are they even prioritizing remakes that need them or like, are they going for remakes that are going to just kind of bring in the fans, so to speak, and like play on the nostalgia? So yeah, if, if, you, if you like casual discussions like this, if you like video games, specifically JRPGs, Nintendo games like that, Give this video a like, it helps out a lot, and subscribe for more content like this. I don't know where to start, but I guess I can start by also discussing um, some of the content and some of the stuff that has kind of made me think about this. Of course, I played Xenogears this summer. I've also recently, uh, earlier this year, I played two remakes. I played Persona 3 Reload and I played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is... It's like... I don't, I don't even know what to call the re-trilogy anymore, and I don't know, we'll, we'll get into that a bit, but um, I also listened to this really great discussion, I'll link it down below, it's by this channel called The Hylian, and I, I, I've just been listening to a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth uh, discussions and long-form content, so I found this channel called uh, Orion, I think is his name, and then he collabed with the Hylian, so I saw more of Hylian's videos through that, and then I saw this video that the Hylian did with one of my favorite gaming YouTube channels, which is Resident Arc. So Mike from Resident Arc guested on that um, discussion, and they were just talking about video game remakes, what many modern remakes have done that they like, and what some modern remakes have done that they don't like, and where they want to see some remakes going, and like even outside of video game remakes, like they talked about the Disney remakes, which are <laughs> not like capturing the real essence of what the movies were trying to convey. And they're like, for lack of a better word, like some just call them soulless, so to speak. And it, it, it's very interesting because I haven't had a connection to Final Fantasy VII. I'll, I'll give that example. Or Persona 3. Like, I, I was never around during the PS2 era. I never played those games originally. Like, whenever, like, I play a remake first, I... It's, it's hard for me to put myself in the shoes of someone who played the original first, and especially someone who played the original back when it came out. Like, I know a lot of my fellow JRPG content creators were, like, there they were like teenagers or like young adults in 1997 when Final Fantasy VII came out and many of them like are very impressed with the remake or some people have some issues with the remake and that that also goes for something like Persona 3 like during the PS2 era like you played it then back when it came out or it also sort of relates to like 
if you just played that original version first or whichever version you just have more of a connection to. Like, I'll, I'll give an example right now. Uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I played that when I was like 11 years old. That was 11 years after the game came out. So like, if you, if you, if you do the math, you can figure out how old I am. <laughs> so I, I wasn't like around during the N64 era, but I still have a massive amount of nostalgia and love and respect and adoration for that game because of how much it means to me as a person, as a gamer, and the impact it had on me. So I, I think ahead to the future, I think about how some people feel about uh, Final Fantasy VII Retrilogy and all that they're doing there, and then I think about like, if Ocarina of Time were to get a remake, what would be the reasons for it? And what would it provide to the already existing Ocarina of Time? And what would it provide to the greater Legend of Zelda series? I, I made a video about this earlier in the year, just discussing some of the rumors about it. I don't really remember what I said, but I was I remember I was a little hesitant about it because when when companies do these remakes specifically like Disney and Square Enix I've seen a lot of the times they do it to play on the nostalgia to bring you back in oh remember how good this game was oh remember the memories you had of the game but a lot of the times it may or may not recapture the same essence of the original. Like I, I know a lot of people were even saying that with Persona 3 in terms of the visual identity and things like that, but to, to me I never really felt that because I didn't play Persona 3 Fez or Persona 3 Portable or anything like that. So that's why I mention Ocarina of Time because like I, I think into the future, like if Ocarina of Time happens will I feel like something is missing? Will I feel like something is not being like truly captured within that remake that they choose to create with that game? And the only instance of something like that happening where like I have played the prior game and then I play the remake, it has happened with the Pokemon games. Like it happened with uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I was actually really impressed with those games back when I was in high school because Sapphire and Emerald were like very formative games for me. Like I think I even played them before Diamond, Platinum, Black and White. Yeah, I played them like very early in my gaming life, especially Sapphire. I played that game so, so, so much as a kid. I still have my GBA cartridge. And when I saw them like on the 3DS, I was like, wow, this is so cool. It, it was bringing me back to those days. but. I remember playing it and a lot of the additions of like Mega Evolutions and all that. It was cool. And I remember specifically making or building the same party of the six Pokemon that I had to beat the Elite Four. But there, there was just some aspects and some vibes of that game that didn't feel as like, it, it didn't feel like the Hoenn that I remember. And that was gonna, that's, that's natural especially for a remake like that, especially if it's shifting its visual identity entirely. And then, of course, there's the example of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which the problem with that wasn't really it staying true to form because it was a very true to form, very by the books remake. But the problem with that was it just was very bland and very basic and very ordinary kind of remake. I expected a lot more additions in there. So of course that's me just being nitpicky and all that, but that's also my nostalgia for those games back then. And me just kind of accepting and realizing that those remakes aren't going to fill me with the same desire as it did back then when I was a kid playing of Pokemon Sapphire for the first time and like exploring the oceans of Hoenn like that that was just mind-blowing to me as a kid and then of course Diamond and Pearl I, I don't think anything will ever come close to the memories and impact that that game had on me when I was a kid and th that is just one thing that's one thing I wanted to talk about the recapturing the essence of these remakes and now the next thing I want to talk about is how I feel like companies should prioritize remakes 
and how I am realizing that that's not what they're doing and it's probably not what they're going to be doing. It's an interesting concept actually because like you see a lot of games that are just kind of like dead and like no one's like doing anything with them, like no one's re-releasing them. And you're like, why don't you remake them? Like Xenogears is always the example I go to. Unfinished game, fractured, fragmented. Uh, disc 2 is like very rushed. It's like a visual novel that's ripe for the picking. Take that, remake it, and you basically almost got a full-on game. And an example of like a remake that had already came out, which embodied that essence, I like to say is like Fire Emblem uh, Echo Shadows of Valentia. Because like imagine going back in like 2015, 2016 to someone like me, who had recently got into the Fire Emblem series and someone was like, oh, you know, like Alm and Celica, like those characters that like, whose weapons you see in Awakening and stuff. Oh, you should play their game. And I'll be like, oh, wh what system is it on? Oh, it's on the NES. And I look at the game, it's dated, it's old, and it's just not very approachable because of the mechanics. But it's also like not available. I don't think that it was on the Wii Virtual Console. I don't remember if it was on the Wii U Virtual Console. And if it was like, I, it was just not a very appealing game. So when this game was overhauled, when all the characters were beautifully redesigned, when all the maps were redesigned from the ground up, and it was given this visual, mechanical, and just structural overhaul, and put on a system that many people had, which was Nintendo 3DS, that was a very beneficial remake, and it was a very good idea for them to do that. And well, I don't remember this, don't quote me on this, I don't remember if Gaiden even released in the West, and that's why I am like forcefully like saying, Nintendo, give us a genealogy of the Holy War remake, because it is a remake of Fire Emblem 4 on the Super Nintendo, but I guarantee you so many people have not played it because it hasn't come to the West, and of course you can play ROM hacks, you can play like all those whatever, those kinds of things, but like I, I, I want to play it in a remake style. I want to play it like if it's like designed around like the concept of three houses and the mechanics of three houses and engage and like given that visual overhaul on the Switch, give that to me because it won't even be a remake. To many of us, it'll be like a full on Fire Emblem new game. And that's what I feel about games like Xenogears and the Fire Emblem remakes. The, giving people an opportunity to play those games, that bumps up the kind of priority in my opinion. Like I always talk about that in some of my videos. That's why I said like Xenoblade X needs to be a priority remaster over Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Like I, I, I just, whenever I like speculate on these things, I always see the pros and cons. I always see like which game sold better, which game needs the second shawl, which game needs the fixing, which game is more like unfinished and all that stuff. So then I look at some companies that are green lighting certain remakes and doing them in very different ways. Like Final Fantasy VII Retrilogy is, is one thing. They're overhauling the story, making things different and incorporating a lot of things from the compilation, which is very interesting because the compilation is very confusing and if they bring everything together make everything canon make everything make sense then i think it'll kind of be worth it but right now i'm kind of holding out my um verdict on that i guess until i see part three and see what part three does and i like finish that and look at the whole series and what it has done because right now i see a lot of the changes and a lot of the changes are nice. It's giving some recontextualized kind of uh, scenarios to some of the versions of Final Fantasy VII, but I hope it's all worth it in the end. Another thing about the re-trilogy is them splitting it into three parts is a very interesting move. And that also puts so much time, energy, resources, and money, and manpower, and development time into three massive games, which if you look at it, they are each essentially going to be full-on standalone games. 
But again, it is within that same world of Final Fantasy VII's Gaia and Midgar and all that stuff. So I think about that and I think about like in my prioritization mind, I'm like, is that going to take time away from other games that Square Enix can make? Like other remakes of games that would need it more like a Chrono Trigger or Xenogears or even newer IPs and newer original games which they would want to make or which they could have made or which they could potentially still make but all their time and resources is dedicated to the Final Fantasy Retrilogy. So it, it, it's just some thoughts I've been having, it's just some things I've been thinking about and I, I want to hear what you guys think as well. And another thing is like Final Fantasy IX, a lot of people have been talking about Final Fantasy IX. It's rumored and everyone is like, oh, it's basically confirmed because of the Nvidia leaks and all that. But I'm also here thinking like Final Fantasy IX is available on all modern consoles. So the availability of that game isn't the issue. There, that's not the issue with it. So what is the like reason it's getting remade? That, that's something I want to know. When this gets announced, when we finally see it for the first time, I want to really get an idea of what they're going for with this and why they chose to do it because a, a big part of what makes Final Fantasy IX so great, in my opinion, and a lot of what makes these PS1 games that I've been playing so good is how they were, I guess, so to speak, uh, restricted with the hardware they had, which led to more creativity. And I talk about this in previous videos about like my frustrations with Square Enix, and of course my the dedicated long-form review of Final Fantasy IX as well. But my thought is like if, if this game gets a remake it's probably not going to have the pre-rendered backgrounds it's not going to have the character models looking the way that they did it's not going to have the same kind of world map that final fantasy 9 had so what are they going to do if it's going to be um more of a faithful remake that many people are making it out to be then what is the factor that is going to draw us in other than maybe like newer music and new visuals and hopefully voice acting, what's going to draw us into this new Final Fantasy IX remake that is something that is exclusive to the remake, which the original couldn't do? Because I played the original with the Moguri mod and it was a really great visual experience. And now like the mod has like significantly like gotten a massively major upgrade as well so but it still retains that essence of the PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy 9 so I'm wondering like what is this remake going to do that the Moguri mod won't and how is it going to add to my experience with Final Fantasy 9 and of course there's also the rumors of Final Fantasy Tactics I'm interested in that because as of now, we don't have like a modern remaster or re-release of Final Fantasy Tactics. So that puts the priority of that a little bit higher than Final Fantasy IX for me. Because on like PS5 or Switch or Steam or any of these modern consoles, you can't like buy Final Fantasy Tactics on a digital storefront. So it would be nice if we get a remaster or a re-release. But at this point, with them waiting so long, I would be interested to see what they do with a remake of it. Because some Square Enix remakes have been really hitting it out of the park recently, uh, some more than others. Like, particularly, I'm very impressed with how Star Ocean 2 did their remake, and now uh, recently, Romancing Saga 2 got a remake, and that looks really good. Uh, both of those games, I definitely have to try them out, but I really hope that if Final Fantasy Tactics gets a remake, I hope it gets a whole new coat of paint and it sees a whole new audience because that that's one game that really could get a nice popularity boost with a potential remake. So that's just my off the cuff, random, like mind dump of thoughts when it comes to remakes and remasters. I, I've just been seeing a lot of companies bank on these remakes for uh, nostalgic purposes and I, I, I sometimes think in my mind like I said in this video like 
where is that money going? Is it all going into these remakes? And how, how much like time and resources does that, does that take away from other games that could happen? And in the end, is it all worth it if some of these remakes don't live up to the original or just don't capture the same essence as the original? If that's the case, then what is the point? What is the reasoning? And what are they trying to do with these remakes? Those are, I guess, that can sum up this whole video. Those are some of the questions that I have in my mind and I guess want to pose to you guys. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about all this. Even with some remakes that deserve to happen, I hope we also still continue to see a lot of good original IPs and original games throughout the many years and as we continue to get more like video game releases in the future. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. This is Anish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like a um, good remake, like a, a play, play Fire Emblem Echoes if you haven't, if you have the ability to play it or play like a Star Ocean 2, Romancing Saga 2 or play, play Rebirth, fun game as well. Persona 3 Reload, like there's a lot of remakes out there. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.